all over the world. We are so glad you could join us, as it's always our privilege to encourage you in the Word of God. So like, share, and let everyone know we're on the air. transformation. So whenever you, it's revealing to your mind who you are in God, who God is in you, then you will have a transformation of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and you will grab a hold to the word and say, wait a minute, there's greater in he that is in me than he that is in this world. And so therefore, I can have victory. I can't say, devil, this means war. Now you need to understand one thing. Everything you need has already been provided. The enemy don't want you to see that. And I hear God saying, if you want it, come and get it. Because he provided everything you need in heaven. That's why Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Everything that you need has been provided. Oh, nudge your neighbor say, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If you want God to turn your husband around, what you waiting for? Grab a hold to the horns of the other side of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every time I lay my hands on his head, you transform his mind. Welcome, believers, all over the world. This is Tim and Vicki, and you are tuned in to Hear and Be Healed. God has an awesome word for us tonight, and I just can't wait to get into it. We've been excited for your arrival. Uh, how many know that when there's two or three gathered together in the place, um, God is in the midst of us. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to be consciously aware of Christ being in the midst of us. We said on last Sunday, setting the atmosphere, we don't want to take Jesus for granted. We got to believe the word. I was <laughs> laying on the bed one day and I was meditating and I heard these words. We're a Bible-believing church. And, and a lot of people preach that and they declare that, that we are a Bible-believing church. What is a Bible-believing church? A Bible-believing church is a church that actually believes the Bible. And so whatever we find in the Bible, we believe that it is. No trying to uh, dissect it to the point to where you try to analyze what, what's, what it's not and what is, you know, because of our experiences. If we're not experiencing healing, we try to uh, interpret the Bible to that point to explain the abundance of our experience. No, the Bible is the Bible. The book says if, if there are some things that we don't believe, uh, shall God deny himself? God forbid, let every man be a lying God to truth. So we are a Bible-believing people, so we just can't say things we don't believe. And so we want to tell you that it's already done, but don't, kick, don't take that as a cliche. You know, we hear that all the time, and, and the devil don't mind us saying it now because we've become so desensitized. It's just a cliche. It's just a word. But I'm going to take you to the Scripture and to show, you, show you that that, that is a bona fide promise. That things are already done and we're going to find out biblically that those things are already done. So I hope you're excited. Like and share. Tell people to listen. Time out for all the hooping, hollering, and shouting. We're not trying to excite you. We're trying to empower you. So because I'm telling you, there's nothing like shouting when you get the manifestation. You know, not just, see, not just going to church and hearing a good sermon that picked you up for just a moment. We're talking about something that will cause you to walk in what the promises of God says in this book. There ain't no use us talking about how big God is and what he can do and God is able and he can make all grace abound. He's El Shaddai, all sufficient with my Jehovah Jireh, my Jehovah Nisi, my Jehovah Sinkanu. And we're saying all of those things, but the manifestation of God in those things, not manifesting. How many know that God wants the believer to manifest those things? Jesus is his good pleasure to give us those things. And the believer's got to believe that and get what? Expect it expected mm -hmm. expect nothing less so the idea of knowing that the god you serve he's well able not mm -hmm. only is he able he'll do it when he do it he'll do it he will, he'll do it and that's just not a song our god yeah. is a god that wants mm -hmm. to show himself strong on your behalf so i hope you're ready i hope you got your, your ears on i hope you got your spirit open i hope your heart is willing mm -hmm. to receive the uncompromising word of god Holy Ghost is going to help us tonight, help me speak, help you hear, help you understand and open up and enlighten our eyes of our understanding because this book has to come alive in our lives, in our lives. We should show the world that we, God's people, are a delightsome land. Mm -hmm. People should look at us and envy us 
and envy the God that we serve. We should be an exemplar fact, uh, an example, uh, example, example of the kingdom of God to where people look at us and say, I want to get into the kingdom. People should want to press into the things of God. People should want to press in the church, get to know God, get to know Christ, mm -hmm. get to want to be like us Amen. instead of for us trying to be like the world. So we've got a lot of things to talk about. We've got a lot of things to share with you. We're going to pray about offering. Uh, but what I want to do uh, before we get into that, we're going to give forth some announcements. We're going to take them all at one time because once I get in the Word, I want to get in there and I, want to, I don't want to break it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I want to do, though, is I thank God for His faithfulness. We are having to pray over people's seeds and givings every Sunday. And, 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 and we're going to keep declaring it. Amen. God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glories. Yes. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men continue to give into our bosom. Yes. We have that in our church declaration. Uh, the website is finished. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, Ms. Lita done a wonderful job. Everything that we need is done. Yes. One of the things that we went back and looked at was the, our confessions. It's loaded with confessions. We got some that we're going to start saying. We got confessions over warfare, prayer, warfare, prayer. We got confessions for ministry. If your ministry needs financing, we got confessions for that. Listen, um, we should not, we should lay hold to our confession. This is what the Bible said. Right. They hold to our confession. We got confessions. We got confessions for church growth. Uh, we got confession. I got a confession here for the city of Houston, which we're going to be praying as we get rid of the church launch that's coming up. And then we have a debt free confession. Confessions are powerful because, like God, Jesus said, we'll have whatsoever we say. And so we got to say some things, and we just can't be quiet. I know the enemy has made us feel uncomfortable by saying and speaking the promises of God. But it's amazing to me. We're not uncomfortable speaking what we have. And what the devil said, well, oh, I'm sick. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I don't feel well. And those things come out so easily. And we don't feel uncomfortable saying that, but that's not what God said. I showed you in the Bible where the Lord said, do not say that you're sick anymore. He said, don't say it. Mm -hmm. But you still say it. Right. He said, let the weak say what? I'm, I'm strong. strong. But guess what? We're still talking about, I'm tired, I'm weak. And, 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 and we have to get to the place where we have to take it serious. And see, the enemy loves it because we say, man, it's not that serious. Guess what? You're waking up tired every morning. You're waking up sick every morning. And you mm -hmm. tell me it's not serious. Listen, we need to take the word serious. Our Lord said, Every idle word we speak, we're going to have to give an account of. Not in the day of judgment, baby, every day of your life. So when you get up and speak death out of your mouth, you're going to give an account of it. It's reckoning time. And when the enemy attacks your body, it's because you allowed it. Job allowed, you need, we need to go back instead of Job. We're going to get a chance to do that. You're going to find out that Job had a protection around him. The devil quoted it. He said, man, you got a hedge of protection around Job. You got a protection around him, his family, everything that he has. I can't touch him. Job won't for nothing. And then God said, hey, he is in your power. And you go back and you find out Job's mouth pulled the hedge down. Mm -hmm. His mouth pulled his hedge down. And we be on, on us about getting our mouth fixed, our mouth right. Mm -hmm. All that little stuff that we say that it don't matter, the devil loves it. Because guess what? It matters to him because he's going to snare you with it. Because he said we are snared by what? The words of our mm -hmm. mouth. And we keep snaring ourselves, we keep snaring our family, we keep snaring our children. Boy, you ain't going to amount to nothing. Shut your mouth. We got to change that stuff. And it is very vital that you continue to watch us because we're going to keep reiterating, keep talking about the word, keep encouraging you. Get your mouth fixed. Get your mouth fixed. Go back and look at James. James say, oh, what a little tongue of fire. It kindles a big, great flame and it'll make brain for much destruction. I know I'm paraphrasing a lot of things. And I'm moving a little fast because I want to have such a short time and I want to empower you with the word of God saying, hey, what you say and what comes out of your mouth is very important. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And so and, and, uh, as long as we continue to take those things lightly, we're going to continue to have what we say, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it's good or, good or evil. You're going to have what you say. That is a verifiable fact. Mm -hmm. The Bible is 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 revealing that in our lives because of, of our mouth. So what I want to do is. Thank God for his, his faithfulness and those that are, whose hearts he's touching to be a blessing. Uh, some, you know, we, we can't sit around and say, well, that's for somebody else to do. That's not for me to do. No, if God is touching you, don't be disobedient. Be, obedience is better than sacrifice. So if he touch you, God, well, he, got some, he has a blessing for you. Uh, so we're giving you the opportunity that when we get to that part of the announcement, on 
you can sow your seed into the ministry. We want you to be a part of that. So what I want to do is I want to put some word over that to bless you with it. Uh, we're going to be coming out of Philippians, the fourth chapter. We're going to start with the 15th verse, and this is Paul. Uh, people say that the, he's, he, this is sort of like a partner letter, but this is Paul writing to the Philippian church. And he says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Paul says, I wasn't begging you anything like that there. Uh, but you saw what I had need of, and God touched you. There was a lot of churches. He says, but it's amazing that only you heard the voice of God, and you obeyed the voice of God, and you gave it to my necessity. Mm-hmm. And this is going to abound to you. And I desire for you to have this, that it may abound to your account. See, think about all this here. <laughs> when you look at the Bible, it talks about things that are legal, accounting, Account means there's an account laid up for you. God has a storehouse that you are supernaturally, spiritually depositing into. And listen to what he says. He says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well, pleasing to God. He says, what you did, blessed God. Because guess what? Paul is doing God's work. And when you bless God's work, you bless God. And so here's what he said in verse 19. But my God, somebody say, but my God, but my God God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Does anybody have a need tonight? Listen, whenever you sow, I don't, you know, whenever you sow, I'm I'm not going to just say to this ministry, whenever you sow to anybody, anything, always expect the harvest. Now, I know that the Bible says give to the poor, not expect anything. He says not from that person. Whatever you do, you give it as unto the Lord. He right. says, he that lendeth to the poor, lendeth to God, and God will do what? He'll repay. So you yes. have to always expect. No farmer goes out and sow any seeds and don't expect a harvest. So always expect from the good that you sow. If you sow friendship, expect good friendship, especially if you do good friendship. If you <laughs> sow love, expect love. The Bible says he that desires friends must do what? First show himself friendly. Yes. So whatever you sow, always expect to return. See, I'm saying something, and some of y'all are like, mm. and the enemy just got your tuna. I am saying something so profound <laughs> to the spirit man that the carnal man can't comprehend it. And what I'm giving you is life, uh, life abundant. That if you take just what I said right then, Mm -hmm. It'll transform your life. It is amazing how the enemy has put dumbness and deafness on our ears. Mm -hmm. Listen, open up your spirit wide to hear so you can receive everything from God. You ought to be like a sponge when it comes to the word. Soak up every word you hear. Mm -hmm. You need to go back over this thing and listen to it over and over again. Because God guarantee you're going to hear something that that time that you didn't hear before. So, Get your seed ready. We're going to go to the announcements, then we're going to come back, and we're going to pray over this seed and your seed, and we're going to believe God that you're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. See you in a little while. Get ready, Gentle Hands Ministries. Spread the news. Tim and Vicki Campbell will be in your midst, August the 26th through the 28th, for the Kingdom is at Hand Conference, 7 p.m. nightly. Invite your friends and family, and let us experience God as we come together with great expectation. El Dorado, are you ready? There will be a gathering at the Hillsborough Street Village Outreach Activity Building, August the 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Hosted by yours truly, Tim and Vicki Campbell. So tell everyone you know and love to join us as we come together for fun and fellowship. Get connected. Have you recently joined our broadcast? Maybe you've just started tuning in but don't know the next steps. Whether you are new or been with us for a while, you may not know all the ways you can connect with us to stay up to date with what's going on in the ministry. Here are just a few ways to get connected. Connect with us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com forward slash T-B-O-B-I-C Houston. Here you can like and follow us to get all future notifications. Just click the like button then the three dots to the right to follow. Yes, we're on YouTube. 
where all of our messages are stored free for all to enjoy. Just search for The Body of Believers in Christ. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get your notification when we drop fresh manna from heaven. Last but not least, you can find us on the web at www.tbobic.org. Here you can find out more about us, who we are, and what we believe. You can also get the opportunity to get connected by becoming an online member by registering online. Just know that we're here for you in more ways than one. While visiting online, stop by our online store, your one-stop destination for quality inspirational resources and wisdom tools to help keep your faith alive and your spirit energized. Shop from our large online selection of books on faith, prayer, Christian growth, relationships, business, health and healing, and more, including church supplies. Make your selections and shop online today. Just go online to www.tbobic.org and click on store. You can sow your seed into the ministry. And here are the three ways. On Facebook, found under our About section. Online at www.tbobic.org forward slash online underscore giving dot html via mail at tbobic PO Box 825 Rocheron, Texas 77583 and for fast and easy convenience on your mobile device with Cash App at dollar sign tbobic. Thank you so much for your giving. Just released by Pastor Tim, The Servant's Prosperity. In this simple but powerful book, you will discover God's will to prosper you and the true purpose of prosperity. Get your copy of The Servant's Prosperity on Amazon today. Join us for corporate communion every first Sunday of the month and let us break bread together. To get your holy communion, Visit our store at www.tbobic.org and search for the pre-filled communion cups and wafers. All right, get that seed or that offering in your hand. It's time to bless it. How many are you expecting God to give you a return? Now, we're not talking about doing... <laughs> Man, what are two of the things the church need? Money and healing. Yeah. Money and healing. And always the enemy always gets us cracked up in it, but I tell you what, we'll sow it into anything else, but I'm not, I'm not, and I'm saying it because I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. Uh, look at me. I'm not after your money. I'm after your soul. And so I'm thanking God for those that understand what we're doing as far as getting ready. Well, y'all just on Facebook. You don't need no money. Listen, I'm going to share something with you. God, when I was in that study and God placed up in my heart, he says, listen, Y'all sowing into the wrong thing. I do not want you, Tim, to go into anything Christian. Don't go on Christian radio. Don't go on Christian television. He says, I want you to go secular. These people need to hear the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We're trying to be safe. We're trying to be safe by going into the areas where we already know. Jesus said the whole need not a physician. And so the things and the mandate that God has mm -hmm. given us, we're going to have to go. And how many know that the, the secular going to always they seem to be more expensive than, than Christian. And so they're not going to let us come on. I'm not going to say that. I got favor with God. Amen. Say, I got favor with God. I got favor with God. I got favor God. with God. Amen. God is birth, burning my heart to more so seek after going after the secular radios and secular television station. Mm -hmm. That's where the need is. For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. And so we need finances to do that. We're just, he said, acts and it shall be given unto you. We're not big, and so don't get that, don't get that confused. We don't have to. He still makes a way to, that those that are faithful do give. But just so you can be part of the opportunity, because I, I know you know us. Mm -hmm. And if, if us giving you the opportunity, not asking, but giving you the opportunity to so move, let's say moves you the wrong way, please say, I love them. I'm just not going to do anything, and we'll love you just the same. 
I would rather you not do anything and keep your heart right toward us so you can stay right with God than to be offended at something as small as this. Amen. Amen. Uh, because many of you that know me know I would travel the world for free. My gas, my time, my money, mm -hmm. and never, I have never went to any church and burdened it. Never. Never went to any church and burdened it. I don't have no $150 lines. I don't even have no 100 penny line. We just believe in preaching the gospel. I'm just giving you an opportunity for what God is doing out of obedience. Like he told Moses, ask the people for a free will offering. Moses did, and the people gave. There are some that hear, and there are some that don't, and there are some that are offended. I pray for you that are offended. Don't get offended when it comes to that, that because that's a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's a trick of the enemy. Right. Don't ever do that. Don't ever Anything that has to do with God, think about it. Don't be like Judas. When Mary was blessing and anointing Jesus, this rascal is going to say, what is this waste to our Savior? Don't do that. Don't ever disrespect our Savior. Don't, don't ever take him for granted to think that the things that we're doing for him is a waste. So get your seat. Let's pray for it. Father, we thank you for the seed sown into this ministry, Lord. Yes, Lord. We believe, Lord, that it is good soil and that you've given us a mandate and a commandment to do those things Lord, that are pleasing in your sight, yes. that we can go forth and expand your kingdom. I thank you for every seed thank sown, Lord. I thank, thank you right Jesus. now that you'll return yes. a harvest to this seed. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that it multiplies. I command every seed right now in the name of Jesus to multiply yes. a harvest. Now salvation, yes. now prosperity for the believers that have faith in this ministry and faith in the work of God. And I commend it to the Lord to bless them in Jesus' name and bring forth a harvest in not many days, Lord. Yes. A quick now, God. Quick now prosperity in the yes. name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus. And we give you praise for it, Lord. I thank you for supplying every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we say amen. amen. Now, Father, I thank you for the word. Mm -hmm. Bless it tonight. Move by yes. your spirit as only you can. Holy Ghost, have your way. Move on our hearts. Move through the word. Let the power and demonstration go forth, Lord with signs and wonders following, that the word may go forth unhindered, unchecked by any unseen, unseen force. We bind every devil right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And, that's it. and the word will go forth, and the word will reach every heart, and we'll get down in heart, God, and take root and bring forth fruit a hundred, sixty, and thirtyfold in the mighty name of Jesus, and we give you praise for it. Amen. Listen, I want you to type in the comment section, no deal. Before I get started, I need you to do that. No deal. You will know what I'm talking about. Type in the comment section for all you now. Listen here, you rascal. Don't you sit there and be disobedient. <laughs> I am not doing nothing. It's amazing that the things that God can bless you if you just be obedient to the word. You'll be surprised that just some of the simple things could be your breakthrough if you just obey the word. Just hear. Sometimes you got to hear the spirit. Never go to a church and sit there and listen. You, you, you get your spirit ready and say, I, I'm going to receive something from God. When I hear that word that, that quickens my spirit, I'm going to move and act on it, and I'm going to receive what I believe God for. Naaman with his prideful self, when the man of God said, go dip in the Jordan River seven times, and your flesh shall be as a young, a young flesh. He got in his pride, talking about what the better, how better the waters was where he was. Like, oh, uh, uh, do he know who I am? And the man of God says, I could care less. Just go do what I said do. And when he did it, it humbled him. Now, while you're typing no deal, listen to me. I know you can type and listen at the same time. We as God's people need to live a life that makes the world take note. Nam and all his pride, the dignitary that he thought he was. When God healed him, it humbled him. It humbled him so much that he bowed his he bowed his humility and says, hey, I'm going to serve the God of Israel. I'm going to serve the God of Israel. Think about it. When Shagrach, Meshach, and Abednego got, Abednego got thrown in the fiery furnace, the life that they lived and the, the stance that they took in the name of the Lord, yes. Nebuchadnezzar took note of it and it humbled him. Mm -hmm. We should live our lives in such a way that we humble people instead of for them ridiculing us. And we're going to talk about Joseph. God has given us his spirit. He's given us his son. His son has given us his name. There is no way we should be walking around in shame before the Lord and before this world. 
The world should look at us and envy us. That's why we need this kind of teaching to get us to a level that said, no, you're not some beggarly victim that's going through life. Whoa, whoa with me. I'm struggling and striving and the struggle is real. The devil is alive. God did not call us to struggle. He called us to triumph. And we need to hear more word that shows us that we are overcomers and victors than victims. Just trying to make it through life, trying to live the best we can, trying to stay out of sin. The devil is alive. That's not for us. We are more than conquerors. Now it's time for us to exemplify what this book says about us. Somebody say no deal. No deal. Now let me tell you what I'm talking about. When Pharaoh got ready to let the people of Israel go, well, not let go. When Moses came and demanded he let the people go, four things that Pharaoh did. He says, okay, you can go out there and you know, serve your God where you're at and sacrifice to him. No, Moses said, no deal. We can't sacrifice his, our sacrifices against you. You may see what we're doing and stone us. So no, no deal. <laughs> see how Pharaoh's trying to hold on to, mm -hmm. to things. And I'll explain all these things before we get into the word. I'm, just, I'm setting this as a, as, a, as, a, as a foundation because this is not the teaching, but this is a set of foundation that you got to get a no deal in your spirit. Because before you can say, uh, it's already done, you got to get a no deal in your spirit. So the second thing he said, he says, okay, you can go, but don't go too far. Moses said, no deal. Mm -hmm. We got to go at least three days. The third thing he says, okay, you can go, and I'm going to let you take your children, but leave your flock. Moses said, no deal. We got to have something to sacrifice. Um... Now, that's the, the thing he said. No, the third thing is that he said, you can, you can go, you and your men, but you can't take your, your children and your flock. Moses said, no deal. He says, okay, the fourth thing he says, okay, well, you can go, you can take your children, but leave your flock. Moses said, no deal. Mm -hmm. See, that is the church. First of all, we got people that are coming in the church, and we want to serve God the way we are. Well, the Bible said, come as you are. That ain't the Bible. That ain't in the book. It is. The Bible said, no, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you'll find rest unto your soul. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, come unto me. He said, I am the door, and through me you'll find green pastures. In other words, you'll be added to the church. Now, we add to the church, and that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be we come to Jesus, Jesus changed us, then God adds us to the church. We just saying people, come as you are. So we got a lot of things that, as they are in church. This thing had to be turned around. Then once we get in church, well, the devil says, you can serve God. Uh, just let me tear your family up and keep your money. Some people say, no, you can't have my family. But we broke, busted, and disgusted. We got to say, no deal. deal. I'm not coming to God mm -hmm. just so I can be broke, busted, disgusted, and frustrated. We got too many saints of God that's living that's like right. that, living from paycheck to paycheck every day. And all you come to church is, man, you better at least entertain men. We ain't got time to be entertained. We want to be empowered. Somebody say, I want my stuff. I want my stuff. Everything God says I can have and see. And the devil is, we got people in the church that's teaching us, you're being materialistic. But I just can't phantom in my mind. Somebody help me. Help me. <laughs> How in the world can we serve a God that's so big, sits on a cow, sits, got a cow on a thousand hills, sits on streets of gold, gates made of pearl. I'm not understanding this. Got all power in his hand. There's nothing that he can't do. Is anything too hard for him? All things with him are possible. And yet we as, the, as his children live like snotty, those barefoot, soil pampered children. That don't make no sense to me. Don't make... Don't make no sense. So if we were to look at the church, we would think that God is a, a, an awful father. But he says, your father, he's a good father. Yes. He knows how to give good Thank gifts you. to his children. I'm confused about what the preachers are preaching and what Jesus is preaching. Are you tired of being confused? Somebody shout no deal. No deal. No deal. Uh -huh. No, no, deal. no. no. My father says all of his promises are yea and amen. I need somebody to be telling me that, to empower me, to encourage me, to strengthen me, and help me walk in this thing. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus did not pull you into the kingdom so you can stay sick, bust, broke, busted, and disgusted. Mm -hmm. He died for your total salvation. Kingdom, baby, kingdom. We've got to get back to preaching kingdom. 
Let people know there's a benefit in coming into the kingdom. I tell people all the time, okay, you get all the sin out of your life. What then? Now we got to teach them how to live a victorious life. That you can have what you say. That you can have a life of no, 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 no stress. A life of no struggle. Well, Paul Peter said, think you're not strained when fiery trials come to try you. Did you hear what he said? No, keep reading. He said, it's a trying of your faith. A right. trying. It didn't say a triumph of your faith. It's a trying. Right. Guess what? The devil may try you, <laughs> but he ain't going to win. Right. That's the key. The enemy can try you, but he can't win. But we, we, we got so much word that's going in that's clouding our mind and clouding our understanding and making us victims that we have to sit there and like we have to take stuff off the enemy. That devil is a lie, and you ain't taking nothing off him another day. There's no way you're going to listen to this ministry mm -hmm. and continue to let the devil run through your house, roughshod over your children, over your finances, over your job, mm -hmm. over your relationship, over your marriage. There's no way you're going to continue to listen to this here ministry and, and, and continue to take that mess. No, you are going to be more than a conqueror if I got to snatch it out of your heart. More than a conqueror. Yeah, so now let's find out what's already done. Everything God has prepared for you is already done. We have to get to the place of receiving it. And we need to be taught how to receive it. Jesus told us and commanded us, we are to preach the kingdom. But come on, y'all, let's admit it. A whole lot of stuff is going down. And we say this here, everything going down but the word of God. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Even the one that's saying that. We've got to get the word of God into people. Do you know God takes pleasure when we open up our mouths and magnify him for yes, his goodness? Yes, yes, yes. Those boys were not afraid of Nebuchadnezzar. David was not afraid of Goliath. We should fear no one, no man but God. Nothing we should fear but God. There is no fear. David said, I will fear no evil. Yes. For thou rod and thy staff, they come from me. He says, for you with me. If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, sounds like a winner to me. Mm -hmm. Right. You win every time. No. If you sit there and suffer, it's going to be because of your own uh, volition. Mm -hmm. You didn't get somewhere where you can hear the word and find out, wait a minute. No, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I do not have to take this foolishness That's off the right. devil. Yep. I do not have to watch my marriage go down in shambles. Mm -hmm. I do not have to watch my children continue to be disobedient and backtalk to me. I take authority over every devil and every demon, for I know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, but against every principality, every spiritual wickedness and happens. I bind up the enemy that's influencing my mm -hmm. boss. I bind up the devil that's influencing my children. Mm -hmm. I bind up the devil that's influencing that's right. my spouse. And I take authority over it in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, where you've given me power over all the power of the enemy. And I know it's not them, it's the devil. Mm -hmm. And so we take those things lightly and we don't fight the enemy. And so therefore he keeps beating us over the head and keep lulling us into defeat. But that devil is alive. Somebody shout, no deal. No, no deal. deal. It's already done. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Isaiah 46 and 9 and 10. Let's build a foundation and build this house up so you can see. I need you to see. I need God, I'm playing like Elisha. Open their eyes that they may see all the things that you have prepared for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. That's Amen. my heart, my sincere Thank heart's Jesus, desire. Yes. That you can open your eyes and see what God has prepared for you. Well, Tim, the Bible said, I have not seen what well, you should have kept reading. We're going to show it to you in the word. Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Okay, are we Bible-believing people? Yes. Uh, are we Bible-believing people? Yes. Who said this? God. God says, I am the one that is declaring the end from the beginning. Yes. God says, you know what yes. I'm doing? I'm going to take this thing and turn around. He says, I'm going to show you what the end is going to be. Amen. Don't worry about the beginning. I need you to see the end. Mm -hmm. You want to know why God shows us the end? 
because he wants to give us the insurance to have confidence that it shall come to pass. Yes, Lord. Thank That's you. going to give you the joy while you're going through the beginning and the middle and enduring through all of that because you are excited because you're keeping the end in mind knowing that it's what? Already done. Mm -hmm. God has already showed me what the end's going to be. Yes, so Lord. therefore, every time, watch this, every time God shows his men and women of God or something, whether it's in a dream, he shows them what the end's going to be. We're going to be talking about Joseph and using him as an example. Even when he showed Pharaoh his dream, he showed him what the end was going to be. He said it's going to be seven years of famine and seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. Showed him what the end was going to be. So therefore, he had to have somebody interpret it because he didn't know anything. Yeah. And Joseph had to interpret it. We're gonna, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but I want you to keep that in mind. Our God is a God that calls, that, 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 that declares and he said when he declared, what did he say? And I would do all my pleasures. Pleasure. Yeah. So guess what? It is his pleasure. Mm -hmm. Go back to what Jesus said. It is his good pleasure <laughs> to give you the kingdom. It is God's pleasure to show you what end he has for you. Come on now. You remember Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know, are we Bible believing people? Yes. Why are you sitting in church with your lips stuck out talking about I'm just going through? Why are you going through? Have you not seen the end? Have you not heard the end? Have you not believed the end? Have you not known the end? The end says you win. Amen. And you have to stay steadfast with integrity toward what God says. And if you let the enemy pull you from what, the God, what he said in his word, you will not see the end. You will not see it. But it won't be God's fault because I'm telling you, I've never seen anyone that works so hard to try to make the end manifest. He says he changes the times and the seasons. He can, some of us, he done changed the seasons for us so many times <laughs> trying to make sure that ending come to pass. You done got, you done got uh, drunk. You didn't, didn't got dizzy. God just keep changing the seasons for you. <laughs> Listen, stop. Lay hold to the end and be like Jesus for the joy that is set before you, that end that God has shown you that you're going to lay hold to it. And with joy, you can despise the shame, the pain, and all the hell that you go through until it's manifested. It's already done. And the things that you go through to get there, you tell the devil, as, it, uh, as you go along the way, he tries to solicit you, say, hey, yes. if you be the son of God, hey, if you bow down, uh, I'll give you, no, no, no deal. I, I, I already seen it. I'm going to get it anyway. Mm -hmm. Jesus, what you going to bow down to the devil for? Man, all this I'll give you. Jesus, it's already, man, I'm going to mm -hmm. take it. That's right. No deal. Yes, no deal. So let's look at Hebrews 12, uh, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the listen. author, watch this, listen, and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, see, what you remember is in the garden. We said, oh, Father, if it be thy will, bid this cup be taken from me. That's what you hear. You saw him being whipped with cat and nine tears. You saw him, the thorns being pushed on his head. You saw him being nailed to the cross. That's what you saw. You saw a man. But the Bible says for the joy. Oh, I didn't see no joy in Jesus. No, 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 no. He began to see the end. Jesus yeah. was the one who told me, yeah. says, I'm going to go. They're going to crucify me. I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be in the grave for three days. But, 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 but here's the good news. Mm -hmm. I will rise again. again. Yeah. What made him go to the cross? He, he saw the he end. He saw the end. I know what the end gonna be. So when you go, so when you tell people what you believe God for and what God has shown you, and they say, "Well, don't look like you, you're prospering to me," then your car break down last week, mm -hmm. then your child just get put in jail, then your mama just die, and you still smiling, talking about, "Oh, for the joy that God is gonna manifest yeah, a blessing in my life," and they looking at you crazy like you done lost mm -hmm. your mind, talking about call nine one one. We need to get the psychiatrist down here because sister is in denial. The devil is. Lie. I'm in a vision. I'm in a dream and I'm going to see God's expected end come because he has declared to me mm -hmm. the end from the beginning. And I already know what the end is going to be. 
and is already Amen. done because if Glory. God says so, he said he shall do all of his pleasures. He said, I'm not like a man that I shall lie, nor the sin of man that I should repent. If I said that I'm going to do it, if I spoke it, I'm going to make it good. Somebody shout, I can count on God. I, can count I on can't God. count on you, but I can yes. count on God. You can tell me what you're going to do yes. and you won't show up. I'm going to be there, Brother Tim, to be with you. And then you don't show up. Don't think one thing about but knowing that you just lied and it don't bother you. <laughs> But God says, uh-uh, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do, do something it. because guess what? I watch over my word. My word means something to me. And when I tell somebody something, I'm going to keep my word. And God says, if you be assured to do your word, you're about to bring it to pass. If you open up your mouth and you tell somebody you're going to do something, he says, brother, you snared by the words of your mouth. You better do it. And we just take things so lightly. We tell people, hi, child, I'm going to call you at 9 o'clock tonight. You better call them at 9 o'clock unless you're under the grave. Because you said yeah. something and your word should mean something. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, every other word we speak, we're going to give an account of. And by our words, mm -hmm. we're going to be justified. And by our words, we're going to be condemned. I know I'm setting somebody free. Some of y'all just need to be yes, jumping Lord. and shouting. Don't want to get up out your seat, <laughs> run around the kitchen for a little while and do a holy dance. Because <laughs> God is going to take us to another level because we've been sitting around doing the devil's bidding and acting like he wants us to act talking like he wants us to talk, and we didn't get exactly what he wants us to have. But that devil is a lie. No deal. Mm -hmm. I know how to, I know what the end going to be. And what yes. God has spoken over my life, I'm going to make sure I do not mess it up. Amen. So let's look at, look at Isaiah 55, 11. Now remember Jesus for the joy. If God has showed you the end, you ought to be rejoicing right now. Why are you, oh, I'm going through all this I'm going through. And, you know, I, I'm just serving the Lord, going through did you forget what the end's going to be? Get some joy. Get, re, begin to rejoice. Hey, smile. When the devil hitting you, say, well, how, how can you be smiling? I'm hitting you with everything I got. And the devil, because I, I, I know what the end's going to be. I saw it. God showed it to me. And he's going to do all these pleasures. Mm -hmm. He declared my ending. Right. How many of God done declared your end? Yes. Amen. Glory. Then put a smile on your face and don't let God see yeah. you walking around frowning and complaining. <laughs> Let him see the joy of the Lord in your heart that makes you strong. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And I shall prosper, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. I'm going to ask you again. Are we a Bible-believing church? Yes. Who said this? God. Okay. Is he a liar? He's not a man. He that said, he should lie. No, my no words lie. that I say, yes. it's going to do what I tell it to do. Mm -hmm. Now, your words might not, mm -hmm. but my words are. And he's asking us, begging us, sometimes pleading with us, believe my word. Believe my word. No, you're not going to church just to go to church. Baby, yes. you're going to church to be empowered. Mm -hmm. Stop going to church, criticizing it. Turn it around. Mm -hmm. You don't like what you see? Start speaking to it. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Pastor coming in here, what is he doing? He ain't teaching nothing. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, your people need to be fed. Yeah. Fill him with the Holy Ghost and fill him with the word, God, that he may feed the sheep, Lord. Not because he's a, a, a pleaser of men. Don't let him be afraid of their faces. Let him speak the truth, God. Let him speak the word, God. Let him show us, oh God, how to be a fat, flourishing sheep in the pastures of Almighty God. And I thank you, Lord. Bless him in Jesus' name. Don't go out and criticize the man and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Pray for him. We got confessions for your minister that you can pray over your pastor. Mm -hmm. We got all these things. Yes. We got to start using his mouth and doing it God's way mm -hmm. and not the devil's way. The devil say criticize, backbite, go back and, you know, tail bear. That's what the devil say do, and a lot of us do that. No, I take that back. I, 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 I counsel that. A lot of y'all do that. I ain't doing that no more. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I, I, I fear, I fear God and walk in, and walk and work in the righteousness. That's what God wants to do. He wants us to fear him and work righteousness. Amen. So the idea is we got to do things God's way. Now, let's read Romans 4, 17, 21. Now, watch this here. I'm going to show you. We're going to tell you the scripture that, that is already done. We're going to show you that it's already done. As it is written, I have made thee. No, we ain't got, we ain't got that yet. Go ahead, no, go ahead. No. I got something else to talk about. No, it's not yet. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Isaiah? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Romans 4. Uh, mm -hmm. We got, uh, I, I kind of got ahead of myself. Go ahead. Okay. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations 
before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was, all, he was able also to perform. Abraham says, I'm convinced God didn't show me the end. God went to such an extent to show me the end. He changed my name from Abram, right? Yeah. Right father to Abraham, father of multitude. Yes. And so the Bible said Abraham, that made him strong. He stopped staggering because mm -hmm. God showed him. He says, watch this here. He says, go out there and look at the, the stars. Mm -hmm. He showed him, he showed him, this is going to be you. This is you, Abraham. Yes. That's the, that's the end. He said, look, at, can you, can you number the, the, the grains of sand? Abraham, Jesus. that's you, man. That's me. God was so convincing and he had such faithfulness toward, uh, such confidence toward God's faithfulness. He said, Sarah, we about to have us a son. Mm. She said, man, you old and I'm old. <laughs> he said, baby, that don't even matter. I ain't even thinking about that. If God says it, it shall be so. Be so true. I don't know what you're gonna do. Put on your best perfume, your nice no, you, you, you know what you know what to do. <laughs> and we're about to get it started because I believe God uh -huh. and what God said is going to come to pass. Right. Somebody say, and it will come to and pass. It will come, come to on pass. now. Y'all said yes. that like now, I want you to say it because you believe. <laughs> Not because I told yes. you, now I want you to say this now because you believe it. Now, let me say this here. Yes, Lord. I know you've been going through a lot. I know you've been going through it for a long time. But hear your man of God tonight. It say, believe the Lord mm -hmm. your God and you shall be established. Mm -hmm. Believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. Mm -hmm. Are you a Bible believing person? If you believe that Bible, God said that. He said, if you believe him, he says he'll establish you. We got to believe God. If he said in his word, you got to believe him. God said it. Yes. That settles it. I believe it. Then you got to believe and start taking, not for granted, his men, men and women of God. People back in the old days, they, they, they reverenced the men and women of God. Man of God, they better take my children. What you going to do? Mm -hmm. Man of God, I lost the axe handler. It was borrowed. What you going to do? Mm -hmm. Man of God, I ain't got no more some bread, uh, enough to make a bread for me and my son. What you going to do? Mm -hmm. What should be done for this woman when she don't have a son? I mean, you're going, by this time, you're going to be a base in the sun. You said, man of God, don't play with me. What you going to do? We got to get back to reverencing our men and women of God. Men and women of God, we got to get back to reverencing God. And stop being hirelings. Let's get God's word and God's people so people can have something to live and look forward to that right. will transform their lives. No more just having <laughs> church to be having church. Filling in spaces with entertainment. Mm -hmm. Smoke and lights and all that stuff. My God, we just substitute everything for the power of God. That, that stuff don't make no anointing. Mm -mm. Just because you dim lights and blow smoke and flashing lights all over the place, that don't make no anointing. The anointing destroys yokes and removes burdens. Yes. That's what we should be looking for. Yes. At the end of everything that we do, did a yoke get destroyed? Did a burden get removed? If it did, we need to get back on our knees and try again. Yes. Try again. Try yes. again. We substituted the Holy Ghost for all these things, gimmicks and things. Now, people need, people have real life problems and they need solutions. Right. My God, we need to, we got to go back to preaching the word because they got to hear so they can believe and have faith for it. And so we got a God that says he can't lie. And Abraham says, I'm not staggering at the promises of God. And there are over 8,000 promises in this Bible for you. And the Bible tells me that all of them are yeah and amen, amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. And yes. guess what? We're supposed to be having them, having them. Not, not, not barely getting to work, uh, barely getting to church, borrowing five dollars just to put five on five to get to church and then pray that it'll crank when you get out on the parking lot because you're embarrassed. Oh, Lord. Or you sit around and wait till everybody leave before you try to crank your car. 
The mm -hmm. devil is a liar. Amen. Or a spot all on the parking lot of the church. That's not, that's not, that's not God's people. That's not God's best. Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to do, Reverend? Get in this book and find out how we can lay hold of God's promises. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to do. And now, I know it's hard to do when we hear everybody say, oh, slow down. Slow down. You know, you shouldn't be wanting all that from God. You think that's going to hurt God with all that he has? <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, let's read Genesis 2, 4, 7. Now, here's what we're about to get into to show you that God has everything already prepared. Go ahead. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed it into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Have you noticed that when God created all things, he created everything mm -hmm. before he created man. Mm -hmm. Everything that man needed, he created it first right. before he created man. Mm -hmm. So when man got ready to live his life, everything he needed was already Ready, done. done. Yes. Read, read 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Don't you let anybody lie to you and say, well, that's, the, that's talking about salvation. Salvation is not a things. No. Things. It's everything you need. Jesus said, don't, you don't have to reach out to them, run out to them, and worry about them. He said, your father already know what you have need of. Need yeah. of what? Those things. things. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things, things shall, shall be, be added, added unto you. Yes. You don't have to desire them. You just have to believe God and believe that he said it and it's already been prepared for you. And Paul says, mm -hmm. I have not seen, you, you have not heard, neither been into the heart, the things which he have already prepared. So look at your neighbor and say, it's already done. It's already, it's already done. done. Tell yourself, it's already done. It's already done. How am I going to pay the tuition? It's, it's already, already done. done. How am I going to pay my light bill? It's, it's already, already done. done. How am I going to get healed in my body? It's, it's already, already done. done. Now, what you got to do is listen to the Spirit of God mm -hmm. and see him reveal it to you. Mm -hmm. Let him reveal it to you. That's right. I can say it to you all day long, but until the Holy Ghost reveal it to you, to where you can see it on your insides, to where God can show you the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Woman of God, man of God sitting in a wheelchair, I know what they say. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. This is how you're going to live your life. You'll never walk again. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Amen. If you can let God reveal to you what he's already prepared for you, that by his stripes you were healed, you say, Spirit of God, show it to me, reveal yes, to me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And then you begin to see yourself walking. If that's the thing you desire, you begin to see yourself running. You begin to see yourself playing soccer, catch, football, running track, mm -hmm. running a marathon. <laughs> see yourself doing it. For God says, these people are one, and that there shall be nothing that shall hinder them from whatever they imagine. Mm -hmm. Imagine. You begin to see and say, Lord, I see myself. I already see the ending. If you said according to your word and your promises, you said you will declare and do all of your, all of your pleasures, mm -hmm. your word says, I'm here. What do you want from me? Oh, that I may receive my strength in my legs that I may walk again. Amen. Do you believe I'm able to do it? Lord, I believe. He said, can you see yourself running? I see it. Mm -hmm. Why? It's already done. Now, we got yes. just a little time. 
John 16, 13 says, How be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He, will, he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak. And he will show you things to come. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Things to come. Glory. He'll bring that Amen. thing to come, the end, bring it back and put it right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you can focus on it and say, this is how the end's going to be. So therefore, I can have joy. Thank you, you won't get up. Watch this here. When you really see the end, mm -hmm. you won't get up every morning saying how sick you are, how tired you are. You're going to get up rejoicing. Because I know what the end going to be. be. I, will not, I, will not, I will not disrespect my God by saying anything other than the word. I will not say what I feel. Mm -hmm. I will not say what I have. I will say what he said. And if he said, let them not say they're sick anymore, I'm going to obey. Yes. Amen. And I'm going to work righteousness. <laughs> For to do what he tell you to do is to work righteousness. To do anything other than that is to work unrighteousness. And so if he said, let the weak see the strong, I'm not going to get up in the morning and say, well, you know, I'm kind of weak in my body. Don't say that. Don't say that. Mm -hmm. It's unrighteousness. If he tells you, let the weak yes. say that they are strong, stop taking it for granted. Stop taking it lightly. Mm -hmm. It's disobedience. Are we Bible-believing people? We are Bible-believing I know I probably lost a lot of folks tonight because, you know, a lot of people don't want nothing. Thank God you're still here. Yeah. You want something. And you're going to make it work yeah. because you believe that this Bible is real and you're not just going to church to be ch going to church being religious. Let me tell you something about religion. Religion will keep you in the very place that you are and you'll be still under Pharaoh's thumb, under the devil's thumb, right. continue to live life. And it's going to be sad for you to get to heaven and point your finger at Jesus and say, Lord, what were you? And he's going to say, my God, I gave you that, 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 that preacher and his wife on that here and be healed. And they was telling you exactly what I wanted you to know. But you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. You wanted to be religious and just go to church. No, no longer be religion, religious. Right. Hear it and do it. Y'all knew I'm telling the truth. That's okay, the truth. okay. He said, let the weak say that I'm strong. Did I say that? No. Who said that? God said Okay, then why would we want to say anything other than that? You, you believe well, the Bible? Because most time, uh, the man of God blessed me this morning. I was listening at Heaven Gates. Um, Church of God in Christ this morning, Elder McMurray, he was ministering, and he was um, saying that how Jesus won our faith, and it blessed me. Um, I was just listening because sometimes, you know, we have the compassion, and we want to see people get healed. We want to see them set free and get delivered, but many people sometimes, you know, they get in the lines, and they come to be prayed for, but they come in contempt, and the contempt sometimes can be because, you know, you're afraid of what may happen if you actually do get up and walk, that you got to go to work. Mm -hmm. Got to so, give up the disability. So you got to give up your disability. You have to give up uh, the attention, you know, of people catering to you, you know, and, and those things like that. And so I know that you think that's a small matter, and, uh, but it's really not. It's, it's like a way of contempt against the word. You mm -hmm. come uh, in contempt because you really don't wholeheartedly want to be delivered or healed. You know, well, I, I believe they want to be healed, but they just, hear me, yeah. Pharaoh still got a hook. I, I, want, I want to get to the promised land, but I still want the leeks and onions. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not how God, God says me always. He says, how long are you between two opinions? Yes. Either God or Baal. You have to make your mind. Uh, don't be lukewarm, because if you do, I'd rather you be hot or cold, or I do what? I spew you out of my mouth. Yes. So, the, yeah. and, and, go ahead. Yeah. But what I want to encourage you is, is that, and as he said, not saying that you really don't want to be healed, but you're wrestling between the two opinions of getting healed. It's standing in the way of the power connecting to you to, oh, to, to, to get you what you need. Because, you know, that's the part that, that's the contrary part. God wants you to give up. He wants you to, you know, wipe it off and let him be God. And so he does. He wants your faith. He wants your uh, belief. He wants your constitution of believing on him and that it's him that did it and, um, and, and that he can do it. So, you know, so it does take um, something on our part and that part that God will receive from you is your faith. And the man of God was encouraging 
the people, whatever your need is, whether it's to get up out of a wheelchair, whether it's to recover from a sickness, whether it's to have your finances restored, that God wants your faith. you got to believe that he's the God that is able to do that and that there's a part that you play in the whole situation. Yes, you can continue to let somebody else try and get those things for you and provide for you, but it's nothing like standing before the master being able to cast your cares and him being able to touch you with nothing else in the middle where he said making you entire, complete, wanting nothing. So, you know, just be encouraged. Sometimes you just have to do it, what I call do it scared. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, well, you just have to just drop it all. And don't take my, you know? my adamancy mm -hmm. As if it's to take it to kind of, I am so angry with the enemy because I do not like what he's doing to God's people. And I'm, right. I'm kind of angry at leadership because we're helping the enemy because we're teaching people to be victims. We, we give, we're not teaching them the kingdom on how they can come out and live a victorious life. We just like teaching them to just take it out the devil. The devil is allowed. Not, we're not going to be taking nothing off the devil. And, and good leadership, this is what good leadership do. I was reading about David. Mm -hmm. David was running for his life, and it says he was ran up into the cave of Adullam, or Adullam, however you want to say it. And it said there came men that were in debt, that were depressed and discontented. And if you look at that story and follow them, those yes. same men that was worthless turned around to be mighty men of valor, one killing 800 with a spear, Abishai killing 300. David came and turned those men's lives around. He says, I know we're running for our life. I know you in debt. I know you discontented. I know you depressed. But I'll tell you what, when we all come together and learn that great is our God, I'm telling you, brother, I fought a lion. One man killed the lion, killed two men that looked like lions. And they looked at the life that David was living with God and said, wait a minute, I can win with God. I ain't got to sit here and take this stuff. My children ain't got to go to hell. I ain't got to stay broke busted and disgusted right. no who is telling yes. me this yes well yes. just do the best you can you know god works in a mysterious way i don't want them ways because god's ways are not mysterious his ways are high amen they're not mysterious they're high mm -hmm. and the idea is he wants us to come up to the level where we start walking like he walk talking like he talk thinking like he think and if god if anybody tell us anything that's contrary to word to the word of god i'm gonna ask i'm gonna tell you like god told adam who told you that right Yes. Who told you you couldn't win? Who told you you couldn't be healed? Who told you you couldn't get the prosperity? Who told you that? Especially when God said, I know who we go. Whose report are we going to believe? Right. If God mm -hmm. says the land is flowing with milk and honey, don't listen to them people that's coming back talking about how big the giants are. Those giants, they big out there. Who told you that? I didn't tell you to go look at the giants. I told you to go look at the stuff. Now, one time did he tell them to look at the giants. Don't look at the walled cities. He said, go and find out that the land is flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. See if it's like I said. Right. That's all they told them to look at. And they came back and said, yeah, show sure not be. But we saw something else. We saw defeat. We saw sickness. We saw poverty. We saw death. We saw disease. No, I saw nothing but God. Mm -hmm. Those people saw Goliath. David saw defending his God. You uncircumcised, yes. uncovenant Philistine, you done defy the armies of the Lord and disrespect mm -hmm. God. I'm going to yes. feed your fowl, your yes. flesh to the fowls of the air. Now, I want to close with Joseph. We over a little over time, but I, I need to share this with you. God showed Joseph a dream. He showed him the end. Mm -hmm. Showed his family bowing down and people bowing down, him giving all beyonds to him. And think about this. I'm going to do you a quick story. Job, his brothers tried to kill him. They said, oh, there come that dreamer. Let's kill him and then let's see what shall become of his dream. Mm -hmm. God says there's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. Yes. I don't care what they form. It will yes. not work. Thank you, Jesus. When yes. God has given you something and you can lay hold to it and don't you speak against it, it will surely it come to pass. pass. So God intervened, made sure that he didn't die. Throw him in a pit. Guess what? He went in a pit. He went from a pit to being sold into, slavery to, sold into slavery to Potiphar. Went from Potiphar's house, you know the story, going to, into prison. Mm -hmm. Guess what? See, a lot of folks don't understand. We look at the pit in prison as punishment. But I'm telling you, it's nothing more than preparation for the palace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was sharing my wife, I said, when he was ex listen, ex ex uh, interpreting the dreams of the baker and the butler, he came into prison. He says... Why y'all so sad? 
Now, I caught that. I don't know if you caught that. I caught that. For him to notice their sadness, he mustn't have any sadness. Mm -hmm. In the prison, no sadness. <coughs> this man, Joseph, was in Potiphar's house. God was with him, excelling, while most of us complaining. The very job you own that you thank God for when you first got there, now you're complaining about it. Oh, this job is full of it. This job is this and the job that. Don't you know that's the enemy? He's going to yeah. make everything that God gives you stressful, hard, toiling. But Joseph maintained his integrity toward God. When that little fast wife of Potiphar tried to get next to him, he says, uh-uh. I can't sin against my God and mess up, well, like we said, with the power. Mm -hmm. I can't let anything mess up the power that God's exactly. working in my life. Right. See, baby, that's why you got to stop sinning. Mm -hmm. Sinning for the wages of sin is death. Just sitting there telling you, stop sinning, stop sinning, you're going to hell. No, forget hell, baby. God, you got heaven to gain. Yeah. Forget about hell. You got heaven to gain. You say you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven if you do those things. So, so, so hell coming later. Forget about that. Start work trying to get into the kingdom. Those sins sin short circuit yes, the blessings and the yes, benefits that yes, God will give yes. you while you operate in the kingdom. Yes, the, 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 the sin will stop you from being healed. It allows the enemy to come in and put sickness in your body. It allows the devil to come in and steal your bag, the money and so your money like bag, money with bags or, ho or holes in the bag. No, no, that's why you stop sinning. That's a reason. Right. Now, fornicating is not worth it. I'm going to tell you right now. It ain't worth the blessings that God has for you. It ain't got the end, the expected end that God has for you. It's not worth it. Look, I tell like Ken Jones say, you're not cute enough. Amen. You're not cute Good enough. <laughs> I got to lay hold to what God has shown me. Amen. And so Joseph said, no, ma'am, I cannot sin against my God. I ain't scared of Potiphar. The man that giving me everything and put it in my hand. I'm not scared of Potiphar. He said, but I will not sin against my God. And for the joy that was set before him, that he will be a posterity to his people. Joseph maintained his integrity toward what God has showed him in the pit. In the palace, in, in Potiphar's house, in the prison, and God was watching him how he conducted himself all the way through that. And the pit and Potiphar and the prison was not punishment. He saw them as preparation for promotion when God got ready to promote him to the palace. Yes, Lord. And he was able to be Jesus. a man that maintained his integrity toward, toward God. He wasn't murmuring and complaining, talking about, I'm, I've been serving the Lord and, and this, nothing is working for me. No. Yeah. He says, for the joy that God has shown me. He believed that he knew what the end was going to be. Mm -hmm. And he was saying to himself, in the pit, it's already done. Joseph, what you doing? Why are you smiling? It's already done. done. What's already done? You're going to bow. Get to Potiphar. Father was saying, man, I can see that God with this guy. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to share this with him. Let's get ready to close. All through what he was doing, God was preparing him for something great. Yes. And watch this here. Thank you, Lord. When Joseph revealed to uh, Pharaoh oh, what his dream was, matter of fact, my God, I wish I could see, go back there and show it to you. I had my hand there. I want, you, I, I want to see it exactly uh, like Pharaoh said. But let me, since, I didn't, since I lost my place, uh, I think I found it. Yeah, here it is. Listen to what Potiphar says in Genesis 41 and 38. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man whom the Spirit of God is in? The life that Joseph lived magnified his God to the much, so much to Pharaoh took note of him. We should be living our lives to the mm -hmm. point to where this world take note of our God and know that God is with us. Yes. Nobody could, under, could, could interpret Pharaoh's dream, but Joseph did. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they said he, they, they were 10 times better than their peers. Mm -hmm. And the king took note of them, made them rulers. You want to get promoted? Start living and walking like God say walk, and I guarantee you, your God will rise in you. Don't go on that job murmuring and complaining with the rest of them, especially those that's not saved. Mm -hmm. You start walking in God, and whatever you put your hand to, you say, God, prosper it. Be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. Let God give you witty inventions, because he that solves problems get promoted. Yes. 
and you start exemplifying God in everything you do, you stop talking negative, you stop talking down, you begin to say, I'm the head and not the tail. This Potiphar's house was blessed because of Joseph. Mm -hmm. That job is blessed because of you. That home is blessed because of you. Know yes. you're not that you sanctify your home, your family, your husband. You sanctify them. That ministry is blessed because of you. Don't go there complaining. Don't go there and give that pastor headaches. Don't go there causing strife and contention. Don't mm -hmm. go there. He said that where mm -hmm. there's envy and strife, there's every evil word. You go there to be a blessing. And you tell, yes. now you know what? I, I can't I can't fault Bishop Anthony Cotton for saying that. He said when he every time he walked on the scene, he would say, I'm the blessing. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you ought to be a blessing. Yes. You tell, you say, no, you're going to know that God is with me because everything I do is going to cause you to prosper. Mm. That's the mindset we got to have. Glory. Amen. Everywhere you, I go and mm. everywhere I be, blessing they keep on following me. Mm -hmm. That's a prophetic word for somebody. Mm -hmm. You need to sing it. Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, blessings keep on following me. Everywhere my foot trod, mm -hmm. blessings come. Thank you, Lord. Blessings yes. come. Thank you. And the blessings of the Lord make, make it rich, rich and add no sorrow with it. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset we got to have. Thank you, Jesus. That's the mindset you have to have. I want you to get it. Yes. Everything the enemy is trying to say, give you a substitute, trying to negotiate with you, you tell him, no deal. No, no deal. He tell you to sin, <laughs> no deal. Lie. No deal. Mm -hmm. Cheat. No, no deal. deal. Still. Mm -hmm. no, no deal. deal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't entice you no, baby, because I already know what the end going to be. And I'm not going to let you jeopardize that. Mm -hmm. What God said, what God showed me, he shall do all of his pleasures. He's already declared my end. Mm -hmm. He's already given me an expected end. Mm -hmm. I already know what the end going to be. Yes. And it's already done. Yes. Amen. I, I, I know I'm a little bit out of time, but I'm going to read our church declaration and we're going to get out of here. This is our church declaration for all of you who spiritually want to be connected with us. Let's read our church declaration. I'm going to read it. We, the body believers in Christ, enforce God's original plans and purposes in our lives and in the life of this ministry. We are citizens of the kingdom of God and we have what we say. We are doers of the word of God and not just hearers only. We are what the word of God says we are. We have what the word of God says we have and we can do what the word of God says we can do. We hold fast to our confession of faith and we do not turn coward, faint, lose heart or give up. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and guilt, shame and condemnation has no place in our lives. We are God's chosen generation, his royal priesthood, and we are reigning as kings in the earth. We are accepted in the beloved, and nothing can separate us from his love. We are sanctified, consecrated, and separated from the world. We are the healed of the Lord. Jehovah Rapha has taken sickness and disease away from the midst of us. We have a sound mind and body. We are energized, revitalized, transformed, renewed, restored, powerhouses for God. We curse the root we curse at the root every sickness, disease, pain, virus, and infirmity that will try to attack us. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our bodies. The healing power of God continually surrounds us, keeps us, and preserves our entire system. We are redeemed from debt, poverty, and lack. Every household, listen, every household of the body of believers in Christ is blessed and living under an open heaven. The blessing of the Lord makes us rich and adds no sorrow with it. We are increasing more and more and wealth and riches are in our house. We are the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath, and the lender and not the borrower. We are sowing bountifully and reaping a bountiful harvest on every seed sown. We have strong marriages and families that are knitted together in love and rooted in the word of God. Wives are submitted to their own husbands as unto the Lord, and the husbands love their wives as Christ loves the church. Our youth fear the Lord and obey and honor their parents. We bind every demonic attack against our families and speak life, joy, love, and peace over our households. The body of believers in Christ is prospering at everything it sets its hands to. Yes. We have a great work to accomplish and we command finances and all resources to come forth now without delay. We call in everything prepared for us before the foundation of the world that pertains to our life and the life of this ministry. We declare that the wealth of the wicked, the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret places come to us now. 
The supernatural word of God is prevailing in every area of our lives. We are fighting the good fight of faith and laying hold to eternal life. We are overcomers and our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Now, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That is our declaration for this ministry and our declaration over your life. We love you. Yes. We'll see you next week. It's already done. It was the effectual fervency of his prayer with passion that evaded much. Get excited. Get ready. Get set. Because we're about to go. I'm here to tell you the word is going to spread. Whatever you need, God's got it. There's some folk down there that are just not concerned about they for it no more. If you need help in your house, where the enemy is trying to come in and take over, there's some folk down there, you ain't got to find but one, baby. Just find you one. They will pray effectually and fervently for you, and God will come in and arrest that devil and put him out. I need some soldiers. I need some warriors because this means war.